this video, we're going to review a new medication that's now available for alopecia areata. I'll also give you an update on my alopecia areata condition. I'll also share with you if I'll be taking this medication in the near future. In June of 2022, the FDA approved Illumiant, which is baricitinib. These are oral tablets that treat adults with alopecia areata in the severe form, and that's what I have. Alopecia areata is an autoimmune disorder in which the body attacks its own hair follicles. In addition to hair falling out on the head, it can also lead to a lack of eyebrows and eyelashes, for example. And there could be other problems such as brittle nails and it also, of course, has an emotional toll on the people affected by this condition. This is the first medication that's been approved by the FDA for a systemic treatment of alopecia areata. So let's go over what baricitinib is. First of all, it's made by Eli Lilly and Company. It is a JAK kinase inhibitor, which blocks the activity of one or more of a special family of enzymes that interfere with the molecular pathway that leads to inflammation. The JAK-STAT pathway plays a major role in transferring signals from the cell membrane receptor into the nucleus of the cell. Interestingly enough, Illumiant was originally approved in 2018. It is approved as a treatment for certain adult patients with moderately to severe active rheumatoid arthritis. Let's go through the trials that led to the FDA approval of baricitinib. These results were published in the New England Journal of Medicine. The trials consisted of randomized, double-blind, and placebo-controlled conditions. These were phase three trials with a total of 1,200 patients. The inclusion criteria were patients who had at least 50% hair loss as measured by the severity of alopecia tool, which is called SALT, for more than six months. Patients in these trials received either a placebo, two milligrams of Illumiant, which was considered the low dose, or four milligrams of Illumiant, which was the high dose, and these pills were given every day. The primary measurement of efficacy for both trials was the proportion of patients who achieved at least 80% scalp hair coverage at week 36. As you can see in these graphs from the study, the placebo group, when you compare that to the treatment arms, which were the two milligrams and four milligrams of baricitinib, you can see a clear improvement in the results when the treatment was used. Also, the four milligrams seemed to perform better than the two milligrams of the drug. Additionally, about 12% of patients who took Illumiant at a two milligram dose and about 25% of patients who took Illumiant at a four milligram dose achieved 90% or more of hair coverage compared to only one to 4% in the placebo group. You can see in this set of photos how remarkable the results were for some patients. So let's go over some of the side effects involved in these studies. The most common side effects were upper respiratory tract infections, headaches, acne, and high cholesterol. You can see that these serious adverse events occurred at a rate of 2 to 3.4% in the treatment groups and about 1.5 to 1.9% in the placebo groups. In the treatment groups, one person had a major adverse cardiovascular event and one person developed a new cancer. So what are the warnings and precautions that Eli Lilly tells us about baricitinib? Well, they recommend close monitoring for the development of signs and symptoms of infection during and after treatment because the medication lowers the ability for your immune system to fight infection. They also say that you should evaluate patients for active tuberculosis infection and testing for latent tuberculosis prior to the treatment with Illumiant. Also, there's a potential for viral reactivation, so something like herpes zoster, Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, which we have a video on, is possible with the baricitinib medication. Also, there is the, always the potential for hypersensitivity, such as an allergic reaction, some GI problems, and changes to some of your laboratory blood values, such as your white blood cell and red blood cell counts. Now, there also is a boxed warning for more serious things related to Illumiant, and these include serious infections, mortality, malignancy, and major adverse cardiovascular events, and thrombosis. Now, much of this has been observed in prior studies related to rheumatoid arthritis patients, so it may not completely apply to the alopecia areata cohort. However, as you saw from the study results, there were several patients who did develop some of these more serious things. 
what has been found for JAK inhibitors has been a higher rate of all-cause mortality, including sudden cardiovascular death, which has been observed in patients taking this medication. Also, lymphoma and other malignancies have been observed at a higher rate in patients who have been treated with Illumiant. In rheumatoid arthritis patients who are age 50 and older and have at least one cardiovascular risk factor and were treated with a JAK inhibitor, uh, there was a higher rate of major adverse cardiovascular events, which included death, a heart attack and stroke. Also thrombosis, which one version of is, is like a DVT or deep venous thrombosis or, or a pulmonary embolism, was also observed at an increased incidence in patients who were taking Illumin compared to the placebo. Now, a lot of these dangerous things were not observed in the alopecia areata studies. One reason is that the patients were much younger and more healthy. So the average age in those brave studies was 37 years old. So very different from the average age of a rheumatoid arthritis patient in those studies. So that may have accounted for the difference in these more serious side effects and complications, but we just don't know, right? Potentially, as alopecia areata patients get older, and they develop other health conditions, maybe being on baricitinib creates other health problems beyond just what they would have experienced without taking the medication. We just don't know. Of course, at this point, we need longer studies in alopecia areata patients beyond just the 36 weeks that were evaluated in these studies. Also, I have to say that you need to keep in mind who's funding these trials. The trials are funded by Eli Lilly, who also manufactures the medication and does the primary marketing and sells this medication. So, of course, they want to show that the results are positive and the results are in their favor to be able to sell the medication and to have it FDA approved and to have it covered by all the insurance companies. So. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the way the studies were done, but I think it's important when we're evaluating these studies, when we're looking into these studies, to know who's funding the study and could there be the potential for bias. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Now we'll review my current state related to alopecia areata. So I've had some minimal eyelash regrowth and a few eyebrow hairs, which I can show you right here. Nothing to brag about, but uh, I feel like something is starting to return. Uh, and then on my right eyelash, I definitely have some hairs growing. And then also, uh, I'm starting to shave the mustache area again because every few days I'm starting to see a little stubble. That's kind of exciting. Um, not much happening up here, that's for sure. My nails have been really strong. There was a time like over a year ago when I had really brittle nails, and that was a scary thing, of course, because I'm a surgeon. So now that the fingernails are much stronger, I feel great about that, and I have no functional problems related to the condition. Every three weeks, I still go for allergy shots to try to retrain the immune system to just behave better so it's not trying to target my uh, hair follicles. And overall, I have a thriving surgical practice and lots of support from the YouTube community, so we really appreciate that. So I would say emotionally, you know, I'm in a good place, and at least for now, I don't really have a need or a desire to be on baricitinib. I feel like things are pretty good right now, and I think the only thing that would tip me over to consider potentially going on the medication. And this is what I recently told my dermatologist who reached out to, to tell me about the FDA approval of this drug, was that if I start to develop some nail problems, or for some reason if the lack of eyelashes becomes a functional problem for my vision, then of course I will consider going on the medication. But for me, at this stage, I don't really see any other reason to take the drug. But of course I'm very happy that it's now FDA approved for people who choose to try Illumiant and to see if it helps them regrow their hair so that they can feel more confident and better about themselves and potentially also help them treat these other functional things that can come about from alopecia areata in its severe form. If you want to take a look at my entire alopecia areata journey, we have a great video that goes back to where it all started. Please check that out here.